Hello everybody and welcome back here to IndieSportsCrew.com. I'm Thad Van Dieven and right now it's Sunday night. We're going to take a quick look back at the weekend, the first opening weekend of the tournament for all the four Indiana schools that are in here. We're basically going to focus on two main teams. That's the Indiana Hoosiers and the Butler Bulldogs. So uh, let's get started. Let's just go right after it. There were four teams that started the tournament from Indiana. There's only going to be one team advancing to the second weekend and go to the Sweet 16. That is the Indiana Hoosiers. The number one seed in the East region uh, really rolled over James Madison in their first game in the 1-16 versus 16 matchup. Not a lot of difficulty uh, in that first half as they grew a big lead. Had a, a lead as big as 30 at one point and just kind of coasted the rest of the way. They got a 21-point victory over the Dukes. Then they go to round two. They face Temple, the ninth seed of Temple Owls. Uh, Temple comes in from the Atlantic 10, the same conference as uh, the Butler Bulldogs, which they're going to be leaving, and that's a story for a different time, but... They come in as a team that can really shoot the three, and they have one prolific scorer, Khalif Wyatt, who is a really, really good scorer and a really good scoring guard, and he does it in multiple ways. And the Hoosiers got a firsthand taste of that as he dropped 31 on them in this uh, third round game, uh, if you still want to call it that, here in the tournament. But really, honestly, IU survived a big scare in this one in Dayton. Uh, they win 58-52, but they scored the last 10 points in the ball game to get that done as they trailed by four late in that game. A couple of big things that, to mention about this game that really got the Hoosiers over the hump. Jordan Halls, number one, suffered a shoulder injury in the first half, set out most of the first half, gave the team, I thought, a big lift in the second half, made two big shots, a three and a pull-up with a guy in his face, but I feel like his emotion and energy was key. And secondly, a guy that's going to probably go overlooked a little bit, Remy Abel. He stepped in defensively on Khalif Wyatt for most of that second half after he went off for 20 in the first half, really kind of contained him as much as he could in that second half. I thought his minutes on Wyatt were key. Uh, Watford, Christian Watford with a huge block, probably a game-saving block as uh, they threw it down to Lee down low and it looked like he had a wide open layup and Watford came out of nowhere to block that shot keeping the Indiana game, keeping Indiana in the game as they pulled it out in the end and then uh, when it comes down to it, you're ahead by one Temple needs to have a stop Cody Zeller kicks it out to Victor Oladipo, top of the key and he bangs in a three ball right there about 14 seconds to go in the game. That was a dagger. Put the Hoosiers up four, and they win by six as they add on some free throws late. But they get on, they get that win. They move on. They're going to the Sweet 16. Well, they'll face Syracuse, a really tough Syracuse team. They're the number four seed in that eastern region. That, that game's going to be in Washington, D.C., so a tough one there for the Hoosiers as they move on to the Sweet 16. Let's go to the Butler Bulldogs. Butler won their opening game against Bucknell. It was kind of an ugly game, really what a lot of people expected, but Butler put together a really big run late in that second half to kind of pull away from the Bison. Uh, they won by 12. They really kept Mike Muscala under wraps, and he really didn't get a, have a chance to go off, and a lot of that credit goes to Andrew Smith. The senior center, 14 points, 16 rebounds against Bucknell, and a great defensive job on Muscala. In their second game uh, yesterday, they, they took on Marquette in a rematch of a game that took place in Maui uh, back on November the 19th, in which Rodney Clark won that game on a buzzer-beating three for them to win by one. At Rupp Arena, it was a little bit different. Butler actually held the lead late with about a minute and 10 seconds to go. Marquette made a run, made a couple of huge shots. Vander Blue was nearly untouchable. It was kind of a shootout between him and Rodney Clark for a while. Vander Blue made some key plays down the stretch. But it did come down to an opportunity where Butler had two threes in the air with under five seconds to play that would have won it as they lost by two. The first, Rodney Clark, one dribble to the left, shot it. It was short, goes out of bounds. Marquette turns the ball over the in, on the inbounds pass. Then they uh, Butler calls timeout, set up a play. They get it to Andrew Smith. Kind of lost his footing. He was off balance. His three does not go at the horn, and they get beat. Marquette goes with its third straight, sweet 16. Uh, all of that also in the East region. So Marquette's going to be in Washington where Indiana will be. Butler goes home. Maybe not the type of season that a lot of Butler fans expected, but still a very good uh, season for the Butler Bulldogs. They really got a lot of things accomplished. Got that first round win. Couldn't get back to the Sweet 16, but after missing the tournament last year, really can't bounce back strong this season. Now you are going to lose Smith and Clark, but a lot of good things going on at Butler. 
Notre Dame and Valpo, the other two teams, really were never in their contests in their first games. Both of them got blown out. The scores uh, were actually a little bit different. Uh, Notre Dame actually played a little bit better, and their score looks worse than Valparaiso's. Valpo's score looks better, but they got smoked early, and Michigan State coasted the rest of the way. Real quick to finish up this video, I do have to give a shout out to the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles and also my grandpa, Fran Baker, and my cousin, Jesse Bedwell. My cousin Jesse actually attended FGCU down in Fort Myers. My grandfather lives down there in Fort Myers, and he's been telling me all year that I need to keep track of that Florida Gulf Coast team, that they were at the top of their conference. I didn't pay much attention to it other than the fact that I did see that they won their tournament. I pulled for them. They were in the dance as a 15 seed. I thought, hey, you know, not a chance to beat Georgetown and they smoked Georgetown in that first round game when they're playing tonight as I'm talking to you right now so congratulations to FGCU and a big shout out to Fran Baker and Jesse Bedwell. Thanks for coming to AnySportsCrew.com. We'll see you again next time.